So today we're starting off here in the greenhouse because I'm going to be sowing some peas. More on that later. But also I'm going to be harvesting because it's October folks and I am still sowing and harvesting in my garden. So um, let's go on with the peas because it's raining and it's freezing and I'm not going out there yet. It's typical autumn. Lovely sunshine, nice and warm one minute. Now it's totally freezing and it's chucking it down with rain. And autumn in Scotland, two things generally. Hang on, there's rain on the camera. So as I was saying, autumn in Scotland generally means cold, wet and very windy. So today it's not windy, so you know, that's a bonus, but it's quite, quite cold in here today. And I don't know if you can hear the rain, but it is hammering down. Um, but I'm still going to, as you can see in the greenhouse, things are growing, doing well, everything's coming on. I'm going to keep taking advantage of the days where we do get sunshine because we're still warm in here during the day if there is sunshine. A day like today where it's all clouded over, it's freezing in here. But if we get that sun, you know what it's like. An unheated greenhouse when it's sunny, even if it's not warm, but that sun heats the greenhouse. So I'm taking advantage of that and I'm going to sow something else today. Just that concession. I always say concession, that's not what I mean. Word, Eli, word. Con, con, con. Can't remember the word, but I'm sowing often little amounts so that as one lot are ready to harvest there's another lot coming up so that I can try and keep supplies going for as long as I can. Today I'm going to do something a bit different so I need trays today and not my fancy things. Oh. So little seed trays and I need some compost. Now I got a weird request um, in this week's video somebody asked me to talk about my compost and potting soil um, which made me chuckle because I sometimes think you guys must be sick of hearing me talking about my compost and potting soil. So compost is homemade. Uh, potting mix, again, I make my own potting mix using my homemade compost. I'm going to put a link up on the left and I'll put it in the description of the video and I'll put it in the little screen at the end of the video for you guys. I did a video way back in the, not even spring, I think it was January, where I talked you guys through how I make my own potting mix. So go and watch that if you've never made your own before, because making your own compost and potting mix and things saves you a fortune and you can completely control it. But I need some more. So, this is my very last of my compost. It's not my last, I've actually got a full bin and half a bin out there. I've just not sorted it yet, but... <sighs> so I said in last week's video uh, that I reuse my potting mix from the greenhouse. Or, and my compost from the greenhouse. Um, what I do, I said then, I'll say it again, I sieve it all and check it's healthy, check there are no things in there I don't want, like, you know, I get rid of all the root mass um, and I will get rid of any beasties I find. Now, here in Scotland, I get a lot of issues with vine weevil and vine weevil grubs out in the garden, so any pots in the garden will have them. So that's why I got into the habit of sieving things and checking through. Um, oh, not so common in the fact I've never had them in the greenhouse, but I check just in case, because those things will decimate your plants. So there we go. Now, when you're sowing seeds, you do not need fancy seed sowing composts and seed mixes. Um, those things, basically all they are is super, super fine compost. You just basically sieve it until it's super fine. Some of the big name companies will add fertilizers to that. You do not need that in a seed mix. Um, seeds and seedlings do not want a rich, nutritious soil. It can actually harm them. Um, you want nutrition once they become baby plants, but not while they're just tiny seedlings. It can actually burn the roots. So, I'm just gonna, I'm talking nonsense now and I, 
I just need to get on with this. Right, okay, I need to water this and I don't want to get everywhere wet. So I water the soil before I put seeds in it, give it a really, really good soak, and then I put the seeds in it. So hang on. And there we go. So I've given that a really good soak and now I'm going to sow some peas in it. What I'm doing is growing peas in here so that I can cut the little pea shoots off for salads. So I've got loads of peas left over from what I grew this year. Um, I grew Kelvdon Wonder Peas. And I'm just going to use them because I've got heaps. And you just sow them like normal, but you're not letting them grow to be full, massive, big plants. So some people also, if you're sowing peas, a lot of folk actually soak these overnight first to just help them to germinate and get them going faster. You don't have to, and I don't, but it is one of those things you can do if you want. So peas just need to go in. I don't need to give them heaps of space because I'm not intending them to be any bigger than seedlings at any point. But I'm just making a little tray of pea sprouts, pea shoots, that I'm going to use in salads. So you'll see me do this a lot. Um, I got asked this week about growing microgreens. I generally don't grow microgreens because it's not something we eat a lot. Um, but I do cut and come against salad quite often and I do it like this. I just make a tray um, and I just sow in that tray, just a small tray like this. And there is a whole thing going to be happening this year with the sowing and growing in the spring in here that I'm not going to ruin now, but it's coming. Um, it's going to be dead exciting. And we're about to hit 10,000 subscribers. So I've got the most amazing, totally awesome giveaway for you guys to do with sowing and growing in spring as well. Got a, a company we use quite a lot are jumping in with us on a 10,000 subscriber video. It's all I'm saying. And we need to get to the 10,000 subscribers first. So. so if you're not subscribed, make sure you remember to hit that subscribe button. And here's the key. Use that bell because YouTube won't tell you about every single video unless you tell it to, okay? And you don't want to miss out on the cool stuff. So remember and subscribe, folks. Right, back to this. So I have just literally sewn all the little peas in there, just in rows. That is it, okay? So you know the next thing is I need to put a label in it because I'll forget. And I will just write peas. But like I say, I'm not growing pea. <sighs> messy, messy puppy Eli. I'm not growing actual pea plants. I'm growing them for the shoots for salads. So there's something quite exciting. Okay, I've got some stuff to do in the garden, but I'm going to have to wait till this rain goes off, so that might be one for later on. So it was actually this little guy that gave me the idea to talk about this today. I didn't deliberately plant him. In fact, if you remember back, this is where all the beans were. So he appeared a few weeks ago on his own. Don't know whether it's been um, a bird has dropped a pea and it's taken or he'd been hiding under the soil until we took out all the bean plants. I don't know, but he's here and he gave me an idea because... <sighs> I don't know how you're feeling about the plethora of videos that are on YouTube just now, all titled What You Can Sow This Month or, or What You Can Sow in October. You know, there's loads of them and some of them are awesome, some of them not quite so awesome. But one of the things that I always think I'm not sure if I understood this right, is what can you sow outside in my garden just now versus what I can sow in a greenhouse? Because a lot of those videos seem to be people sitting inside a polytunnel or a greenhouse or in the house talking about what they're going to sow. Um, and given that this is my first year going for it with the autumn and winter sowing, I've got a lot of questions. So peas then, I've seen people say you can grow peas for pea tips. I've seen people say, you can actually plant your peas now, they're pretty hardy, and it'll give them a head start before spring next year. So I don't know which one it is. So how about we have an experiment and we do both? What I'm going to do then, this little guy, I'm going to take his lead, 
and I'm going to grow some seeds out here, outdoors in the garden. Okay, now these are Meteor. These are the ones that I seem to see getting recommended all the time. They're apparently quite a quick start to go and they're pretty hardy. So I'm just going to plant one row of these out here and if they're as hardy as people say and they take and they survive the winter and give me a head start in spring, way hey. If they don't, it's not the end of the world. Now, another thing I was thinking, what you could do if you're worried, Now, that's just a cloche. I actually did a video speaking about the whole sown and grown undercover in early spring. So as usual, I'll link that video for you guys so that you can go and watch it if you want to. But one of the things you can do if you're worried is you can give outdoor plants a wee bit of protection. Put it undercover with a cloche. So we could try that, but I'm just going to quickly put some seeds in the ground now and then I'll get you back in the greenhouse. So, like I say, I'm not going to do a lot. Basically, I'm just going to put a wee handful in the ground, just like one row or whatever. It's an experiment just to see. And then we'll go on with the other outdoor thing we're going to be sowing. Or is it planting? There we go, two rows of four. You know I'm going to forget to label them, don't you? But we'll keep coming back and checking and see how things go. Maybe we'll leave that one under the cloche and these ones not and we'll compare. Right, next thing's the garlic, it's going over here. I don't know if you remember, but I complained a few weeks ago how hard it was to lift these with one hand. I came out and Kate had put handles on them for me to make it easier. So here we go then, garlic. <sighs> it's that time of year. I think everywhere you go just now you're hearing people talking about planting out their garlic. So I thought, let's have a wee chat about it because it's so not complicated or difficult in the slightest if you just know some of the basics. So in case you have no clue and you've never done this, two types of garlic, soft neck and hard neck. Differences between them that you know, are important are soft neck garlic stores for a lot longer than hard neck so if you're wanting to grow enough garlic for you to be using for the rest of the year you probably want to go with soft neck hard neck doesn't store quite as well although it stores fine just not for as long but the other thing is a hard neck garlic you will get scapes now scapes are awesome they are when the plant tries to flower and it puts out like a it's almost like a giant chive Garlic scapes. Scapes are basically the garlic is going to flower, going to seed if you like, and you cut these off so that it puts all of its energy back into the bulb to get it ready because we're going to harvest it soon. But these are edible and you can cut that off and you can cook with it and it's it's like... Um, it's kind of like, I think it's like, you know, garlic chive Welsh onion, that type of flavour. Slightly more subtle than garlic itself, but they're awesome. And I have to be honest, that's the thing I'm most excited about. So I am growing hardneck. This is the same variety as I grew last year. Um, it's a Scottish company. They grow these here in Scotland and sell them. So they're the really garlicky company. And I'll put their uh, website in the description for a few reasons. So they grow this in Scotland, so I know it's going to work well in our climate in the UK, um, even though I grew it last year, so I know that anyway. But also, it is so much cheaper than all the places people normally go. You know, normally we buy like Isle of Wight garlic and all that stuff. This is so much cheaper. So I've gone with them again. But basically, garlic, two things you need to know, bulb and clove. What we're going to plant are the cloves. This is a bulb. And a bulb is made up of multiple cloves. So the bit that you use for cooking and eat is the clove. It's the little sections. So first then, we need to take our bulbs and break them up so we can plant them. Now, looking at these, I'm struggling because it's so wet. I'm going to go and get my kneeling pad. This way I can sit down and talk to you. So first thing then, I'm not going to be planting all of this. That's too much for me, but I'm giving some of it away. So the cool thing is, 
you can actually keep some of your garlic that you have grown this year if you haven't eaten it and you can use that for planting if you don't want to buy new garlic every year that's kind of the standard way we do it but what to do is keep the big ones for planting out so you see very very different sizes you want to keep the big ones because hopefully you'll get bigger bulbs or bigger cloves at the end of the year if you sow from the bigger ones so I'm just going to sort them quickly <sighs> so next thing you want to do then once you've sorted them out and you've got your bigger ones you want to take this papery outer surface off okay and it just rubs away just the outside okay we're going to talk about the papery stuff on the cloves in a second and once you've got a good bit of that you then want to peel the cloves away from the bulb now you want to be careful and not damage these cloves because obviously if you damage them and put them in the soil the chances are they'll rot but i found if you just kind of lean on it slightly it comes apart and then you can just pull them so there we go so you can see those are pretty big look at the size of those now the next thing we're going to do then so that one bulb has given me four cloves that i can plant so leave the papery covering on the individual clothes, okay? You take it off the bulb in the main, sort of the outside, but leave it on the individual clothes because it protects them. But then you want to look and see the shape. So you can see there's a pointy end and a flat end. You want to sew these flat end down because the roots come out the flat end. And here's a thing to know then before we sew them, soil. You want loose, free draining, quite fine soil to sow your garlic in because garlic doesn't like being soaking wet it will rot so you want some really nice loose free draining soil you don't want to be sowing these like for instance my flower bed over there is quite clay i wouldn't sow garlic in a clay soil so my raised beds are perfect for that and then we're going to actually get them in the ground so let me get some more clothes ready and we'll go Okay, so I've got a fair selection of cloves here, but what you can see is they're very different sizes. So I'm going to take the bigger ones and that's what I'm going to sew. So it's going to get rid of the small ones. So we're just going to get sewn. Now, when you're sowing cloves of garlic, so if we take the first one, you want to sow it, as I said, flat side down because that's where the roots are going to come from. You want to put them into the soil about an inch so that the top is just under the surface, okay? Now, here's a why for that. Garlic needs the cold, okay? So it's those cold frosty snaps are what make this all split so that you get multiple cloves on a bulb instead of just one big mass of clove. To do that, you don't want it to be too deep in the soil because it needs to feel that cold. But you need it to be just under the surface because you do want to give it a bit of protection. But also, you want it to get a chance to grow its roots so that when its little green shoots poke up, I don't have this issue, but you might, you don't want birds to come along and pull it out of the ground. So you want the roots to get established before that little green shoot's coming out the ground. And that's why I'm planting them now as well. So as I said, they do need the cold, which is why you plant them kind of October, November time. My first frost is actually usually around the end of November, so usually about the 21st. So I want these in the ground a week, two weeks maybe before that first frost, because I want them to get a chance to start growing some roots. I don't want them in too early because I don't want them to have grown a big green shoot and then it get damaged by frost. So it's a bit of a balancing act. So we're going to put them in one inch deep. And then we just cover them over. I'm going to give myself lines so that I know where I'm going to. So that's the first one. So one inch deep, but the other thing garlic does not like to feel anything else touching it so 
make sure it's four inches to six inches away from other cloves, but also keep on top of weeding wherever you've sown your garlic. They really don't like competing with the weeds for the nutrition and they really don't like being touched. So first one is in, I'm going to give it four to six inches, second one's in. And I'm just going to keep doing that. And that is my garlic for this year planted. So now I just wait. It's a bit of a long season, so I won't be harvesting these until the end of August next year. But as we go along, uh, you guys grow with me and I'll give you updates as we get the shoots, how they're growing, when we get the scapes and when we harvest. So those are porcelain, so it's a hard neck porcelain garlic. The variety is ducat, which is a Scottish word, um, but you, or you can get them from the really garlicky company. Right. So the garlic's done, let's pop back to the greenhouse and I'll give you an update on what's grown in there before we come out and do some harvesting because I need some stuff for later on. That is us, it's October and we've just sown some new seeds, peas or seeds and garlic, some seed garlic in the garden. We've also sown some peas in here in the greenhouse that I'm just going to use for just the tops of them for salad and stuff. So that's not bad. But we've also got stuff that we sowed last month, so let me give you a quick update. So quite clearly you can see up here, this is some of the pak choy. You can see how amazing it's doing. I have to say, I think this is my favourite thing of the minute. The leaves just look amazing with the purple and then the green undersides, they're just stunning. So these are awesome for stir fries and things. I've got another tree over on this side as well. In fact, let me turn you around. So on this side then, this is the Broccoletto Corridino Riccio. <laughs> You can see it is doing amazing. Look at this. Now, the thing is, it's not grown quite as fast as the claimed, but to be fair, it has got a lot colder, so it will be stunted. So it's not quite ready to harvest yet, but I don't think it's far off, to be honest. This is the other pak choy here as well. It's looking fantastic. I just, the pak choy is my favourite because it just looks amazing. But I've also got my litter. Oh, the little winter lettuces that I sowed. So they're coming on great. Ah. Spring onions, look at that. I'm really quite excited about spring onions because I've never grown any kind of onion before and we use a lot of spring onions. So I'm very excited. And this is the Broccoletto Quarantino Riccio again. So month between these two. Can you see that? So the idea is then that when this lot's gone, that lot will be ready to harvest and it'll just keep things going. How long I'm going to be able to keep this stuff growing and getting harvest, I don't know. That's part of us doing this big experiment together and we'll find out. But it is going to be fabby. Okay then, so that is the seeds that I sowed last month and I've done some sewing with you today. Now I'm going to take you out and show you the stuff in the bed so you can have a see what it's like. It pretty much looks like this stuff, but it's been nibbled slightly by the slugs and snails. Um, and then I'm going to get some harvesting done because I've still got beetroot and lettuce and carrots and all sorts going on in the garden. And it's fab, it's just brilliant. It's October and we're still harvesting. But I'm going to actually, now you ready for this? <laughs> I haven't told, well I have, if you guys follow us on the blog you already know about this because I mentioned it but I haven't mentioned it in the video and I'm just going to put this out there now, I'm going to tell you that I've been ill, I'm not looking for sympathy or medical advice or any of that so don't worry, it's just to explain what I'm going to make for tonight's tea. Um, I've been ill for a few months now, for about four or five months now, and I've had to be on a really, really restricted diet to try and help with some of the symptoms, which means I am not getting to eat any of those gorgeous peppers and tomatoes and things that you guys saw me growing in here and harvesting. But 
thankfully, the lovely Denise, who's over on Instagram at Let's Grow Home, um, and it's actually Denise that gave me the garlic last year, um, she is going through something very similar. So she's been amazing and she's been talking to me about all this stuff and been dead supportive. But she shared a recipe with me. So given I can't at the minute eat tomatoes and peppers and things, hopefully it's not permanent, hopefully it's just until I'm better, but I love pizza and I was trying to come up with an idea for a pizza sauce that didn't have tomatoes in it. And Denise to the rescue, she shared a recipe with me that she found online for a no tomato sauce. No tomato, no tomatoes together. It's basically um, like beetroot and stuff roasted and then blitzed and a wee bit of stock added. So that's what I'm doing on pizza tonight. So um, I'm going to go and get some harvest done, grab some lettuce and stuff and I'll maybe if it's not raining later on, I'll maybe let you see us making some pizza. But anyways, let's go to the harvest. So here we go then. We've got the pak choy, so you can see it's the same, the red pak choy with the green undersides. Um, I would say it's probably just a wee tiny bit further on out here in the bed just a wee teeny bit. Um, some of the leaves have been got by snails. Um, so I have found these nets have been fantastic and they've really helped. I've not seen any more caterpillars, but slugs and snails at this time of year, they're everywhere. So you can see here, the broccoletto is here. And again, I just think it's looking that little bit sturdier, a little bit further on. Um, still not quite ready yet, but not far off. doesn't seem to have suffered from munching quite as much as the pak choy. Um, and this is the muli radish that I sowed, um, which is an awful lot of leaves, but no radish yet. Okay. I need to grab a lettuce. We like a nice bit of salad war pizza, so that's where that's going. And of course, beetroot and carrots as well. was fun guys and I will see you next week because next week is going to be a massive video it's a really special one we're going to be in the greenhouse we're going to be doing stuff about sowing and spring and all that kind of stuff but I'm not going to tell you anymore it's quite a special one see ya